Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com, where I help you design smarter, not harder. And we've got a real, real fun one today. A while ago, I asked you guys over Instagram to submit your designs to me so that I can critique them. And I finally got into it. Remember that this is only part one in what will become a series on this channel. So if your design did not get picked, um, it was either uncritiquable, just way too good, or I'm getting there. I'm working on it. I have a whole list of designs that I want to do with this. Before I start, I want to mention that none of the designs that I'm going to be showcasing are bad, not by a mile. And if your designs are featured, I don't mean any insult by critiquing them, but obviously you submitted them so that you can hear my true sense. And that's what I'm going to do. By no means am I a master of the craft or what I say is the de facto, you know, right way to correct your design. Um, I didn't even go to design school, but you guys trust my taste and my creative prowess enough for me to go over some of your designs and critique them and tell you how I personally go about improving them. All right, enough yapping from me. Let's get started. So I've got a couple submissions here by these lovely people who, uh, you know, uploaded their, their files to the drive. And we're just going to go one by one and try to improve on each one of these designs. I'm going to try to relate some design concepts and principles that I think can be applied to these designs. I'm honestly not one to go by, you know, any set of principles. I kind of just eyeball everything. But I figured if I'm going to give critiques, I need some sort of foundation and basis for what I'm saying. Something that's universally accepted, like the principles of design. By the way, for your submissions for these videos, I put the drive folder link in one of my Instagram stories. But if you didn't catch that, you can upload your files to the link in the description, the drive folder in there for a chance for your design to be featured in one of these videos. Just please remember to include your social media handle in the file name. That way I can reach out to you um, and ask for the layered PSD or things like that. All right, let's take a further look at these. I think we're going to start with Drake here. Who doesn't love Drake? This design is by Illegal CDs, so shout out to him for sending this in. So let me jump right into the PSD file that he sent over. All right, so this is a pretty solid design. I personally am a big fan of massive jumbo prints like this. When it's done right and tastefully, it's a really cool design concept and shirt to have. So yeah, this is really cool, but of course I picked this for a reason. There are a few things that I think could use some improving on. And for the first time in like forever, I'm going to bring out the, the Wacom tablet. You see, I got my pen here. So I'm going to try and, and draw on this design or, you know, circle things that I think need fixing, just sort of draw over it. But I'm really inexperienced with this pen, so it's going to look like shit. But, you know, this is obviously just for display and uh, demonstration purposes, so don't judge me. So the first thing I notice in all of this is the color and the quality of this image here. So obviously I think the, the quality image is, is one of the most important things. I definitely need some work. Sorry, my, they're fucking moving furniture up there, I guess. They do that every day. I don't know what they're moving. But anyway, so the, the color grading on this, I think needs some work. There's some really harsh blending between the valleys here. You can see from this purple to the blue, and that's also because of just the quality of the image. There's a lot of JPEG or JPEG compression artifacts in here. So that just makes the whole blending process a little more ragged. While we're up close and personal, I do want to mention that you probably shouldn't be designing uh, your design on the actual Photoshop mockup, which I don't know if he did here or if he designed it in another document and transferred it. But it just seems like the quality of this is really low. So I really, really opt for designing within the Photoshop mockup. What I usually do is create a large document, 16 by 20 inches, make sure it's 300 DPI. I design in there and then when I'm done with the design I go and test it out on the mock-up to see obviously how it would look on a t-shirt so yeah we're just seeing some pretty not good quality with the compression artifacts here especially here in the city gradients and here where the colors blend into each other you can really see that and on these stars as well you see they're very low quality so we got to fix that so I'm kind of liking the the purplish blue here but I would kind of stick to one color I'm gonna just go for a blue I feel like that's more flattering and fits better with the black t-shirt. So let me just mark that here with my nice little pen. I'm trying really hard guys, this is tough. But I, I wanna fix these, uh, they're fucking moving furniture again, can you believe that? Anyway, I wanna fix these uh, these compression artifacts with the quality of the image here and I'll show you how I'm gonna go about that in just a second. And I just wanna fix all the color here. Next up, this isn't really a huge deal, but this part of the chain right here is really bothering me. It kind of just throws off the whole composition. I mean, it's taking up like a whole bottom third of the you know square rectangular space of the design, uh, but it, it, there's nothing here. There's just all negative space and then this chain 
So if it doesn't really have any significance, then you know, I, I don't think that's something you need to keep. So we gotta remove all this negative space here, take this chain or this part of the chain out, maybe fix the, the angle of this chain or, or how this sits on his neck right here, because once we remove this, it's just gonna look a little weird. So we'll go ahead and, and mess with the angle there. And then again, all this negative space here. So one thing that I really like about this design is the glow around Drake. It's really cool. Uh, it kind of makes him look like he's backlit and the photography also does them justice as well with the backlighting. You can see it's coming over his shoulder here, but I think it's just a little too calculated and it's not too realistic. I think a glow obviously is, is really cool of an idea for this composition to obviously kind of backlight him from the sky, the moon, the city, whatever. But it also creates a really nice depth uh, and separation between him and the background while also kind of blending them in together uh, and making the design more unified. So really cool concept with this glow here, but I would just, if I'm gonna do glow, I'm gonna go all the way. This is, this is really hard to draw, but I might just stick to the trackpad. But yeah, so if I'm gonna add this backlight here, I wanna go all the way, I wanna make it more realistic. I wanna make it look like the moon's actually like fucking shining down on him, beaming at the back of his head and it's all lighting up and it just, it just makes it more dramatic and a cooler composition. So I just mentioned the quality of these stars. If you zoom in here, you can see the compression artifacts very clearly. But other than that, I just think uh, I just think they gotta go. I mean, they're kind of distracting from the the subject here, Drake. There's it's too much. It's it's really cluttered around here, and it doesn't blend too well with the city skyline. And so I think we could clean that up, add a, a nicer, higher quality overlay of some stars. Just sort of focus and hone in on on a few stars maybe, and not have a whole galaxy of of stars in here. So I'm gonna mark X's on these stars right here. There we go, getting used to it. One more thing I wanna mention is the uh, the lens flare right here. It's a good idea, I really like the concept of putting a big star lens flare here, but I feel like it's just kinda of clipping weird with the contours of his face. And also obviously this is a, a lower quality lens flare. You can see in the compression artifacts, so I would, I would opt for a new one and kinda of move it further behind the subject so it's not clipping as weird with the contours of his face here. It just, okay, that's a bad drawing, but sure you see what I mean it's just there's a weird negative space here so I would just kind of avoid putting the lens flare too close to where it is right now I'd probably put it more behind him especially once we backlight or add that backlit glow to this it would just look a lot better if it's placed just a bit more to the left behind Drake all right so we've made our you know nice little artwork here with these drawings now let's go ahead and actually start putting this into practice and fixing these things so we could see what a before and after might look like. So let's start with the color of this. You can see that the, the layers here are pretty much just Drake and then these two color adjustment layers on top of him. If I turn that off, he's just black and white and there's some residual color in here, but mostly black and white. And what's coloring this is the gradient map and selective color here. But when I went into this file, uh, I noticed something weird is that the gradient map, I thought it was just one gradient map over the whole thing. It's the gradient map, which is turning it purple and then you select the color on top of that turning that purple blue so i was thinking why don't you just you know have just the gradient map turning the whole thing to this color rather than doing purple and then blue so what i'm going to do is have some adjustments oops have some adjustments to the actual image itself that kind of flatten it and play with the actual tones the black and white value the shadows midtones highlights before adding any color to it and then on top of all that i think i'll add either a gradient map or a selective color to do the actual coloring work for me, which is taking that black and white image and turning it to all blue or whatever. Before I do all that though, like I said earlier, this image is pretty low quality. There's a lot of compression artifacts in here and luckily I have a set of actions on my website that helps you get rid of those compression artifacts when you do have to work with a pretty low res image. So what I'm gonna do is delete these color adjustments here and I'm gonna duplicate our Drake layer here and I'm gonna run my decompressor action. I'm just gonna run simpler denoise and you can run this a few times just to get that JPEG artifact compression out there. I'll zoom in so you can see it better. So I'm gonna run this denoise action and boom, as you can see, denoise is the hell out of our image. It actually looks almost too smooth, which is why when I do this, I usually go in after with a layer mask. I'll turn the layer mask of this denoise layer to all black. So I'll command I to invert that. And I'm going go in with a soft brush here and I'm just gonna paint in these spots where the uh, the artifact or the uh, JPEG artifact are really prevalent. So so earlier around his beard line here, we saw that the uh, the color was clipping really hard. It didn't look too, too good around here as well. And just anywhere where the mid-tones fade into the shadows, I'm gonna paint in just so we get a little bit more of a nicer fade on the values here. And then this is a little bit strong, so I'll probably go in with the opacity later and 
tweak that just so we can have sort of a consistent smoothness throughout the image. So I'll turn this whole denoise layer down to, I don't know, 70 or 80% opacity. Then I'll merge these two layers. I'll name him Drake, and now we're good to go. The second thing I want to do is hone in more on the subject, Drake. So I want to kind of paint out all these stars here, which I, I said earlier are just a little distracting and it's too busy for me. So I'm going to paint out all these stars. We'll just take a soft brush again here in the layer mask and paint with black over the areas that we want to erase. So I'm going to erase all these stars here. While I'm at it, I'm also going to erase the lens flare here because I'm going to replace it with another one later. All right, cool. I got most of that job done. Next up, I want to hone in on the color of this. So what I want to do pretty much is sort of flatten all the values of this image, which is just going to make it easier to blend with everything else and I'm putting in here. So I'm going to use selective color to do that. And then on top of all that, I'll add a gradient map or some sort of hue adjustment to get the blues in there. So let's start out with that selective color. I'll create that adjustment here, I'll drag it on top of the group and I'll clip it to the group here. And then I'm just going to go into the colors here, go to neutrals. I want to turn the blacks all the way. Oops, wrong way. I want to turn the blacks pretty decently far into the negative range here. And this is just going to pretty much flatten the image and lighten up those mid-tones so that they're closer to the highlights. Next up, I'm going to add a gradient map. So I'm going to go in here, add a gradient map. We're just going to be adding one color to the mid-tones here. So we'll click in the mid-tones and we'll just add a bluish tone here. Lastly, I'm going to add another selective color adjustment on top of all this. I'll clip that to the adjustments here. And I just want to go in the mid-tones and add some more color variation to this. So I'll play with the magenta here and just find a spot that looks nice with the image. I'll also go in the whites or the highlights here and play with that as well. So turn the magenta down, the yellow down, just get a little bit more, more blue in there. That looks pretty good to me. So here's the after all the adjustments and here's the before. And I think it's a much nicer look than the previous line of adjustments, just because we have sort of a flatter spread of values here and there's less different hues going on. So it's pretty much just blue around the whole thing rather than having you know, purples mixing here and pinks and whatnot. While I'm at it, the compression artifacts are still very much present. Uh, so something I usually do to combat that is just add a grain. So what I'm gonna do here is go into the uh, the group of the subject and just add a pattern here. It's gonna be a grain pattern. I have those in my patterns library. So if you do, if you have any of my products, you probably have the same ones, but if not, you can just use camera raw filter noise on a gray layer. I'm gonna set this to overlay or actually I'll set it to soft light. And that's just going to get us more of a consistent uh, grain pattern over the whole image. And that's going to sort of mask those compression artifacts just a little bit and just gives us a nicer blend between the colors. Next up, like I said, this chain is just not doing it for me. So what I'm going to do is go in the layer mask of Drake here and I'll paint out this bottom part of the chain. So we're just left with, you know, the actual chain part of it and that whatever that was maybe was pendant or the extension of the chain. I don't know. Anyway, paint that out. And now it's just sitting a little weirdly on his neck. So what I'm going to do is just select that out and warp it so that it's a little more of a tasteful bend around his, his chest. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to apply this layer mask here. I'll, I'll duplicate. Don't want to be too destructive. So I'll apply a layer mask on a duplicate layer. And this way, I don't have to worry about the layer mask interfering with whatever I do with the actual graphic. So now I'm going to take a selection of, I'll use the po polygonal tool. I'll take a selection of the bottom of the chain here, just a rough selection. I'll duplicate that out. So I'm gonna take the warp tool and just create a nicer shape here for the chain. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Next up, I wanna add that glow back in or that back that I was talking about. So we'll get a selection of our subject here. I'm just gonna use the select subject function here to uh, not waste any time. I'm gonna make a group right up here by clicking the group icon and I'll make this a layer mask on the group and then I'll invert it so that whatever we paint uh, within this group goes outside of our subject. I'll make a new layer in this group and I'll just take a soft brush. So that's a brush on 0% hardness and we just start painting in our glow wherever we want. And we can see that this is a very powerful uh, technique for getting a nice backlit glow. And it's a lot more natural, of course, because you're actually painting it in by hand rather than just using say like the outer glow layer style, which just looks too computerized to me. So once we paint it in, you know, with our brush here, uh, it's just gonna look a lot better and look more realistic. All right, so here's the glow that I painted in. It's already looking much, much better, but let's go ahead and add those stars back in and a lens flare to tie this all together. So here's just an image I'm bringing in from Google here and I'm gonna resize that to, to our composition. And I wanna mess with the levels of this a bit because it's, it's too light. And I'm also going to set the blending mode to screen here. So I'll press command L to open the levels panel. I'll bring in the blacks. I'll turn the midtones down a bit as well. And that's looking pretty damn good. Maybe I'll blur it a little bit uh, just to match sort of the rest of the 
Blur revive of, of the composition. Uh, so I'll turn that to about four or whatever. And that's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna layer mask out some of the stray stars here. So up here and over here and whatnot. Looking nice. Now finally, I just wanna add that lens flare back in. So I'm gonna be using the uh, lens flare kit from Studio AAA. Jack, great guy, go check him out. So I brought that in here and I'm just going to position that sort of similar to where the other lens flare was, but again, uh, we don't want that sort of weird clipping that the other lens flare has. So I'm just gonna put it a little bit more behind his face and find a nice place for this to sit. Maybe even rotate a little bit. Just find a, a angle that uh, works nice with the graphic. Okay, cool, looking much better. Lastly, I'm just going to throw some textures on top of this. I don't always advocate for texturing everything. I think you should be very selective with what you texture, but I just feel like this design will benefit from some nice vintage texture. So that's what we're gonna do. I've got my warm plastic salt texture kit here. Uh, this is available on my website. Just absolutely perfect uh, texture kit for getting that vintage look on your design. Of course, I'm gonna recommend my own product, but this is actually a, a texture kit that I use on almost every single design that I'm doing. So it's been used on my official Metallica and Green Day merch that I've done for them. So yeah, just love this kit. Go pick it up on my website, 20 bucks. I'll throw this right on top of here and I'm just going to set the, uh, let me actually resize it first to match the graphic. And then I'm just gonna set the blending mode to multiply and maybe I'll bring it above the color adjustments here. And then I'll turn the opacity down just, just a little bit so it's not such a dramatic effect. All right, and this is the final result. Let's get a quick before and after. So we fixed the color grading on this. The values blend much more smoothly into each other. And also the subject looks a little flatter, which just helps unify him with the rest of the design. The old stars overlay was just a bit too chaotic and distracting and also pretty low quality. So we replaced that with a more focused stars overlay here that doesn't take too much away from our real star, which is Drake. We fixed the huge lens flare by blending it more with the stars and also placing it fairly behind Drake. That way it doesn't clip too weird with his face and take away also from the subject Drake. We fixed the angle of the chain down here, which was just bothering me. I think this, uh, this uh, rounded sort of contour down there is much more flattering. And finally, we improved the glow by painting it in by hand. It looks like he's actually in the city getting lit up by, you know, the city lights and the moon rather than just being you know, a guy with the outer glow layer styled on him. So overall, the composition is more unified. There's some more depth between Drake and the background. So we're pushing out our subject a bit more there, more emphasis on Drake, which is you know the whole point of this design. But we're also keeping him still very involved in the composition and relating the one element, the background, to the main element by having that back glow in there, which kind of brings everything together. Next up, let's take a look at this design sent in by Absent Minded. Uh, thank you for sending this in. So I actually didn't reach out to him timely enough for me to get the PSD file, but I did just go ahead and put all the elements on a separate layer um, within Photoshop. So I think we'll do just fine. So let's give it a shot. This is a pretty cool design. Obviously, you know me, I love my uh, Terminator and, and Man and Machine references here. So obviously I had to pick this out of the, the bundle and go and critique it. The designer that sent this in also clearly takes a lot of inspiration from me, which I love and encourage. So uh, it's just, it'll be pretty cool to critique this and for him to see, you know, how I were to go about improving and, and making this composition. So to start off, this design has pretty good elements on its own. But I just feel it's missing some unity and hierarchy. There's a lot of negative space here. I feel like your eyes just don't really know where to go. There's a lot of space to be filled in. And I get if he was trying to go for more of a minimalist look, but even then I still think there is a lot that can be done or changed about this negative space. And I also don't get the vibe that he was going for minimalism here. And so I think all this negative space is just distracting. And I think just the composition could be articulated better just by moving around some of the elements. The heart is really cool. Obviously that's the main element of this composition, but I just think it's placed kind of awkwardly and it's such an odd shape that uh, without any framing, it just kind of fits weirdly into the composition. So I would definitely add some sort of framing to the, the heart here. And the type is also pretty cool. I obviously love this font, this kind of sci-fi-esque font and this 3D stuff down here, pretty cool stuff. But I just feel like there's some inconsistent sizing between them and there's no hierarchy. And I feel like for this kind of design and this type in general, you definitely need some, some good hierarchy. I think we could also use the existing circuitry elements here to sort of frame the heart by following its contours. And I think that would help make it a little bit less awkward in the composition. It would also be cool to see these circuitry elements kind of interplay with the hearts, uh, maybe go into one of the valves or something. 
That could be cool. Since I have all the elements of this pretty much separated into their own layers, let's just start moving things around and see what we can come up with. So I've separated everything into three groups here. We have the heart, obviously, the main element of the composition. We have all of the circuitry elements, and I also isolated the type as well. And I took out this little circuit element that I want to use uh, within the type sort of to form a nice little hierarchy within it. So first things first, let's start figuring out the sizing here. I kind of want to make the man and the ore pretty much a lot smaller than the machine here. Again, just to add some hierarchy. And then I'll incorporate this circuitry element somewhere in there to balance out that little piece of the composition. So I'm going to start by scaling this piece of text down to, I don't know, say about here. I'll place that in the middle towards the top of the document. I'll take the ore here and I'll place that again in the middle right under the man. And I think I want to make this a little bit smaller just to play with the dynamics of the type here. And then I'll bring the machine all the way up right below both of these elements. And one thing about this 3D text, it's really cool, but I'm just not really feeling the angle of the extrusion. Uh, I feel like it would be a lot more flattering if the angle of the extrusion was downward instead of upward as it is now. So you see if I just take this layer and I flip it upside down, which obviously it's going to be unreadable, but that extrusion pointing downward is much more flattering to the composition uh, because we have this flat line up here, this straight line uh, that merges well with the man and the ore type. Now I want to take this circuitry element and sort of align it along this type here. I kind of like it on the bottom here, but I feel like I like it more around here where we can kind of fill in that negative space between the ore and the rest of the type. So I'll separate this into two different layers. So let me just layer via cut that. I'll drag this around here and I'll do the same symmetrical alignment for for the left side of this right here. I think it'd be even cooler actually if we flipped this vertically and that way these angles on the circuitry kind of follow the, uh, the contour or the angle of this uh, 3D type down here. Cool, I'm liking that a bit better. I feel like this is a better placement for the type and now we have some sort of dynamics and hierarchy going on. I feel like this looks a lot better and it kind of sets us up for filling out the rest of the composition. Now let's introduce the heart back in here. Like I said, uh, this is sort of an odd shape so I, I wanted to interplay with the rest of the elements and frame it in a sort of way where it doesn't look awkward within the composition. So I think I'm going to drag this above the type layer and that way it sort of interplays more with the rest of the composition. And then next I feel like we could just sort of frame the heart over here by using the existing circuitry elements that we singled out here. And that's just going to fill out the rest of the negative space and complete the design. I really like this sort of dot matrix element we have here and I feel like it fits the contours of the heart right about here. I feel like that's a good placement for it. And we have this other dot matrix within the uh, layers panel here that I could just position sort of around here which also follows the contours of the heart. So I think that's looking pretty nice. Next up I'm going to bring this sort of staggered circuitry somewhere around here and sort of make it interplay with the dot matrix that we already have. So I'll place it right around here and I'm actually going to do the same on the other side. So I'll bring this I don't know maybe right here and that kind of plays nicely with the contour of the heart right here. Let me just drag all this up. Now I want to place this piece of circuitry right around here. And like I said, I kind of want the circuitry to interplay with the heart. I feel like that's a really cool idea. So if I just mask this out so that one of these circuits go into one of the heart valves, I think that'll be pretty cool. So let me go ahead and do that. All right. So I've messed some more with the circuitry elements to sort of frame this heart by following its contours. I'm going to keep doing some more work and see where we end up. All right. So I've got the heart completely framed out with these circuitry elements here. And now this is much easier to work with because it's more of a rectangular element and we can place this pretty much anywhere within the composition and it'll fit a lot nicer. But now I kind of want to fill out this negative space on the right and left side and I think I'll do so by using uh, or repeating some of the elements that I used up here so more circuitry I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick all right it's looking good guys I say we're pretty near completion on this as you can see I framed out most of the composition here and it's looking a lot more balanced visually uh, the only thing is this piece of negative space down here which you can leave like that I don't think it looks too bad but personally I might throw some like smaller subtext in there obviously relating to the graphic and the whole man and machine mantra. I'm gonna do some more tweaks and then I'll explain a bit more my thought process. All right, I pretty much balanced out most of the composition using these circuitry elements to follow the contours of the heart and fill out that frame so that it could fit more accordingly with the text up there. And I've introduced some hierarchy within the text, of course, but also within the graphic by pretty much 
placing emphasis on the main element, the big heart here, and then just using the circuitry as supporting elements and framing it within the rest of the composition. I've also added some subtext down here that is of course completely related to the graphics. So yeah, I think we've done a pretty nice job on this. I might even consider adding a color overlay to the whole circuitry group here and I'll match that to the red that's used in the graphic. I'll use a darker red. So yeah, that introduces some more depth into the composition. Obviously not a necessary step. I think that looks pretty cool. I went ahead and just added some more circuitry in there just to mess with the colors and the variants and the depth of the graphic. So this is a nice final product, I'd say. Let's go ahead and look at the before and after. So like I said, we now have a better hierarchy within the type and the elements themselves. Since we took out a whole ton of negative space, the whole design just feels more cohesive. We also use color to create depth between the text the heart and the circuitry. We also used repetition and symmetry to sort of fill out the composition and also just make the whole thing a bit more balanced. So we've separated this graphic into sort of three different sections. So obviously there's a ton of elements going on here, especially within the circuitry, but visually your eye splits this up into three different sections, at least it does for me. So that just makes it a lot more palatable to sort of read as a graphic where as compared to the original graphic, everything is sort of in their own separate spot, in their own separate lane. They're not really aligned at all or interplaying with each other. The elements are sort of just their own separate thing. And like I said, these are obviously really strong elements, but I just think they could have been placed in a different way so as to make the composition more full, utilize some more dynamics in here, and create more of a hierarchy, and split the design into three pretty much discernible sections for our eyes and that obviously brings the whole graphic together in a pretty nice way. So this is kind of a great piece to explain a bit of a practice method for you. So let's say you have a design like this where the elements are really good in themselves but maybe you're sort of unsure of the composition. I know you hate it and you probably don't want to but one thing I would recommend is just to take a look at the principles of design and follow it like a checklist. Obviously every design doesn't need to follow every single principle but if you feel like your composition is missing something or it just doesn't feel cohesive then it's definitely worth taking a look at the foundations of pretty much what makes a design good and seeing what your design has and what it doesn't have. So for example when I first saw this design one of the first things I thought was obviously good elements but I feel like the dynamics are off we need to find a good balance uh, for these elements and then how can I find a good balance oh I can use hierarchy to maybe place the text in such a way where one piece of the text is emphasized or we frame the text in such a way where it kind of sets us up to lead into the rest of the graphic all the negative space in this really stuck out to me you want to find a good balance of negative space and your elements so obviously it depends on the kind of vibe you're going for if you're going for minimalism that's something you really want to consider if you're not or you just don't know what you're going for you can use supporting elements for example in this design like the circuitry and these dom matrixes here you can use those to frame the main element in the composition such as the heart where i followed the contours of that object and i use that to frame everything but in a way that doesn't take away from the main element too much so that would be i guess the emphasis principle of design so just by using that method of thinking we can instantly identify uh, things in our design that could use improvement and from there it's just tweaking and tweaking and tweaking until it looks visually satisfying to your eyes unfortunately i cannot make it to the third design i kind of jumped before i looked the video is getting a little long now and i figure i'll just save that one for the next video in this series but otherwise thank you guys for watching i really really hope you learned something i feel like this is a great format and style of video to really teach you guys about my thought process within design and it's also really fun to work within other people's graphics and see you know how we think differently and how i go about it versus how they go about it so yeah not only will this be a really fun series for me I think it would also be a very helpful and educational series for you. So if you got something of value or you just really like me, uh, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications bell. Don't forget that if you want to see your design in one of these critique videos, you can upload that to the drive link in the description. And that's about it for today. As always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.